lovely audience. Thanks. How's everybody feeling tonight? Feeling all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Welcome to Lace Show. I'm Stephen Colbert. I hope everybody uh, watching down in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolina coast is staying safe right now. Matthew looks like a Category 4 by the time it makes landfall. So please hunker down or hunker up or just hunker the hell out of there. <laughs> But if you do have to evacuate, please remember we are available on CBS All Access. <laughs> you can take us with you. Speaking of disasters, uh, the vice presidential debate was last night, and uh, we're still we're still sorting through the fallout of last night's pres vice presidential debate. Consensus is Mike Pence was the winner, although there's still no consensus of which one of those guys was Mike Pence. In fact, in fact, this is a fact. In fact, according to one article, after the dust settled, Mike Pence was the clear winner of the debate. There's only two problems with that source. One, it was from the official GOP website. And two, they posted it almost two hours before the debate began. That's how good. That's how good. That's how good Pence was. He tore a rift in the space-time continuum <laughs> to pre-win the debate. Perhaps, perhaps next, Pence can use his mutant time-bending powers to fulfill the GOP's ultimate fantasy and bring America back to 1953. <laughs> now, the ratings of last night's matchup uh, were about half of the presidential debate, possibly because polls show that more than 40% of Americans cannot name who is running for vice president. <laughs> in contrast to the 90% of Americans who are desperately trying to forget who's running for president. <laughs> but everyone, everyone, big, big applause. Wow. As far up. Huge. Huge amnesia fans here tonight. <laughs> but everyone is saying that Mike Pence did well. Maybe too well. When I asked a senior Trump advisor, the response was immediate. He won, Pence won overall, but he lost with Trump. Mike Pence is getting headlines after the debate saying, Donald Trump did badly, but Mike Pence did really well. Maybe he should have been at the top of the ticket. And the, what the advisor said was, you know that Donald Trump does not like to be upstaged. Man, uh-uh, that's got to be tough. I mean, as much as I disagree with Donald Trump, the last thing I want is for the guy to feel like he's being overshadowed. I mean. <laughs> Trump's very sensitive. I mean, people praising Mike Pence too much might push Trump over the edge. <laughs> then again, Mike Pence, I'm a pretty great guy. I mean, uh, <laughs> Pence is just a strong, rock-hard specimen of a man, and uh, <laughs> you look at him, you think world leader, and did you see the size of his hands? I mean, they are, <laughs> they're massive. They're massive. He has some big hands, huh? Definitely, definitely the hands of a man who could keep a wife. I mean, I bet... <laughs> I bet he could do some amazing deals. I mean, I, I mean uh, we all know Donald Trump's a genius, but Mike Pence might be the kind of genius who doesn't lose a billion dollars. I mean, I trust... <laughs> I trust Mike Pence. I trust Mike Pence so much, I wouldn't even want to see his taxes. Someone should give Mike Pence a TV show. Does Mike Pence sell any hats? The point is, <laughs> it was a big, big night for the Pence Trump ticket. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, mean, I got that. I, mean, I meant it was a huge night for Donald Pence. I mean, I mean, for the guy who lives in Pence Tower. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean Trump Tower. I don't know why I said Pence Tower, and I really don't know why I had my graphics team make this photo. <laughs> It looks good. It looks natural, though. Yeah, it looks natural. Real. I saw it. I saw One it. of the big themes of last night's debate was a focus on Donald Trump's other running mate, uh, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Governor Pence broke with Trump's praise of Putin to issue this warning about the dangers of a resurgent Russia. What we're dealing with is, is the, you know, there's an old proverb that says, the Russian bear never dies, it just hibernates. Yes, yes. Of course, he, he left off the end of that proverb. It hibernates, then wakes up with a huge boner for Donald Trump. <laughs> now,
Now, normally when you hear a proverb, you smile, you wait for Grandpa to nod off, and then rifle through his wallet before you tiptoe out of the room. <laughs> He's not going to miss a 20. But this one deserves a little more attention because it has come to light that Mike Pence may have just made up that ancient proverb about Russia. <laughs> made it up. This could be the biggest Trump campaign scandal since Melania quoted the ancient proverbs of Michelle Obama. <laughs> now... <laughs> Very quotable. Quotation. Right, now, it turns out this was not the first time that particular ancient proverb was used. Mike Pence <laughs> was actually quoting renowned Russian folklorist Mike Pence who used the same quote about the Russian bear going into hibernation in an interview back in 2014. Well, those were ancient days. 2014. Those were the ancient times when we cured diseases by pouring ice buckets on our heads. And I happen to know. And then three other people did it. I happen to know that's not the only Russian proverb Mike Pence has made up. I have the rest of it right here in the new book, Mike Pence's Book of Ancient Russian Proverbs. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful edition. We have a beautiful limited edition here. And here are uh, some of the proverbs that we, uh, we just taped into the front page right here. <laughs> <clears throat> Mike Pence's Fake Russian Proverbs. The wise polar bear pretends to be deaf when asked to defend the orange jackass. The snow leopard seems more powerful when he is interrupted by the desperate groundhog. <laughs> oh, here's one. Here is mm -hmm. one that informed some of his controversial legislation when he was governor of Indiana. Uh, the wily fox may escape the hunter's snare, but you shouldn't have to bake a wedding cake for two dudes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two dudes. And I certainly hope he remembers this proverb. The fool that outperforms his master shall soon be thrown from the tower. <laughs> Mike Pence isn't the only Trump surrogate who had a big, big day yesterday. Former New York City mayor and goodwill squanderer Rudy Giuliani <laughs> went viral thanks to this photo of him smoking a cigar with four men in a car and, judging by the look of them, one man in the trunk. <laughs> a lot of it. Uh, keep it down! Keep it down! A lot of people speculating about who was in the back seat. Many are guessing it was disgraced former Fox News CEO Roger Ailes. Hard to tell from this photo. It could have been any slowly melting sexual predator. <laughs> no one knows where they were headed, but from the looks of that photo, they went over to the docks to meet with their goons about killing the Batman. Of course, both of those men strongly support Donald Trump, who, by the way, said something embarrassing this week. I know it's shocking to hear. <laughs> you know the phrase business acumen? Yeah, I heard that. People who have like some skill or knowledge about business, how important it is to prove your business acumen. Uh, well, this is uh, Trump on Monday. I was able to use the tax laws of this country and my business acumen to dig out of the real estate mess. Yes, his business acumen. <laughs> the main ingredient in his business a curry. <laughs> but, mmm, mmm, mmm. Little spicy, little spicy. But this mispronunciation, this mispronunciation isn't that surprising to anyone who studied at Trump University. Because we here at The Late Show have obtained this short educational film that forms the entirety of Trump University's curriculum. Jim? So, you want to stand out from the crowd in the crowded field of business. To do that, you'll need to brush up on your business acumen. 
Business acumen is more and more important in the ever-expanding corporate landscape. A huge part of business acumen is appearance. And appearance starts with the proper wardrobe. You'll need a nice pair of slicks, a TA, and of course, a shiny pair of shuzz. The next important part of business acumen is having a proper business vocabulary. Repeat after me. Chirk, Telfin, Clint, Metting, and the girl. Step three, congratulations. That's literally all the acumen you need to win all your dreams bigly all the time. Fabulous, the best. You graduated. You graduated. We've got a great show for you tonight. Army Hammer is here. Lindsey Bond is here. And when we return, I'll tell you about one of the top threats facing our local news.